we're back in the WordPress dashboard. And just because we've got WordPress, we could go and now just create a website. You know, we could start to add blocks in and layouts and images and things like that. But there's a few things that I think you should do before you do that. So as we build the website during this, these videos, I am going to be checking the page score, which is really, really important. So how does it score on a desktop and a mobile? Because for Google Core Web Vitals, and if you want to help yourself in the rankings, you want to make sure that you're getting a good score in performance. Now, what you want to be doing is we need to be working with certain plugins. And these plugins are basically going to be how we build the website. I mean, we've already given it away. We're doing this all in Elemental. So we're going to have to add in an Elemental plugin. We are going to be using Elemental Pro. So we've got to get a license for that. It is $49 a year, uh, which is about, I don't know, 39, 40 pounds. I don't know, something like that in British pounds. I recommend you make that investment because Elemental Pro is amazing, okay, for what it does. And rather than using lots of additional plugins to try and get the job done, one plugin keeps it very clean in terms of your website. So I do recommend you do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into our dashboard and we're going to go to plugins. And we're going to go to add new to add the plugins. I'm just going to show you though the plugins, okay? So these are the ones we're going to be using. We're going to be using Autoptimize for um, optimizing our website and performance. Elementor. Elemental Pro, Images to WebP, PNG to JPEG, and I will come on to those, and WP Fastest Cache. Okay, so that is six plugins. If you're using SiteGround, as we are for the hosting, you will get SG Optimizer on here. And sometimes you might have three or four other plugins already installed. Just deactivate them and then delete them, okay? Because they're not needed, okay? The SG Optimizer is pretty good. But I have found that using Autoptimize and WP Fastest Cache is much better for my performance, especially in what I can do with it. Okay, so I'm going to just show you now how you add them. What you do is you go to Add New. When you go to Add New, there are hundreds of thousands of plugins. Don't get tempted, as I did about 12 years ago, searching for every plugin under the sun, going, oh, I like the look of that, and add it because eventually you are gonna be slowing your website down. It's literally like you've got a pocket and you're shoving everything in a shop into your pocket. There's only so much your pocket can take before your trousers fall down or something like that. But you get the idea. So what we're gonna do is if I go over here and I type in all top optimize, let me just spell it, there you go, all top optimize, it's gonna pop up, there it is. Now it already says active because we've already got it installed. But if it wasn't active, what you would do is you would click the word install now. It takes about 10 seconds, sometimes quicker than that. And after it's installed, in fact, I'll do it here. I'll just click install. It will then have the word activate pop up. OK, and then you click activate. We're not going to activate that one because I don't need it. I actually need it all to optimize. We're also going to go for uh, WP fastest cache. OK, and I'm going to install that. And I will talk through what they each do in a moment. I'm also going to install Elemental. Sometimes, though, I have to be honest, I don't activate them. I just install and I activate them separately one by one just because there is a danger that you have too many activations going on at any one time. You then install the Elemental website builder. This is completely free. You can add images, videos, text, headers. There's so much you can do with the free version. It is great on its own. You need the Provo to go a step further. But this on its own is really, really good. Okay, so install it, but don't activate it just yet. I'm then going to also do PNG to JPEG. Now, when you add images, if the image is added as a PNG, um, which is a better quality than a JPEG, the PNG will be a bigger size. It could be two megabytes. By converting it to a JPEG, you're shrinking the size down. OK, and it basically cuts off a lot of bloat on the on the image. And you don't want a two megabyte image or four of them on a website. It just slows things down. So this is going to shrink it down huge, a lot. There are lots of other plugins out there that people talk about. I honestly have to say I've tried all of them or a lot of them. And this one is just super, super good at what it does. What I'm also going to install is image to WebP. 
Now WebP is kind of like the standard for how images should be on the web because I've just gone right PNG to JPEG to WebP. We're going we're going micro now. Well, not micro, but it's a lot smaller. So if I just go here, images to WebP, it's made by the same company as the other one. You install that again. That is just going to shrink your images down even further. And again, I have found it works really, really well. You don't have to use it. It's up to you. I'm not telling you you have to use it. It's, it's entirely up to you. Okay, right. And that is it. So if I now go over to plugins, I'm just going to delete this WP Meteor because I didn't actually want it. But look, you hit delete. It says, do you want to delete it? Yeah, it's gone. Okay. You have the option whether you want to enable auto updates. So every so often, these plugins, they're developers, they're updating for security reasons or compatibility with other plugins or just, you know, the, the world changes. You've got to always update and refresh things. So it's up to you whether you have it set as disabled, um, auto enabled or not. I would always say don't auto enable the Elemental Pro because there is a possibility that some plugins, third party plugins, that add on to Elementor. Let me just go back and show you that. So if I go to plugins, okay, and I go to Elementor, we have the main Elementor, but then we got all of this, essential add-ons, premium add-ons, exclusive add-ons, ooh boy steroids, there's happy add-ons. There's loads of these that are gonna pop up. And they all add something extra to Elementor, an extra feature, an extra something that isn't available in the pro version. You decide on what you really want. I always recommend don't overdo it. Don't bloat your system with too much because if you do that, you may regret it when there's a compatibility issue or conflict because basically your website just won't work and you're going to have to uninstall and work out what the problem was. So just be careful of what you do here. That's why I tend to stick to just Elemental and Elemental Pro. Okay, back to our plugins. So we've got all of these added on. So what we're now going to do is just change the settings for some of them. I'm going to go to WP Fastest Cache. What does this do? This basically enables us to um, just basically clean up and keep our website tidy and clear the cache. How many times have you heard someone say, oh, my website's not showing what I think it was meant to show, and someone goes, clear the cache? It's a bit like when people say, delete the cookies, delete your browser history. Why is my website slow? Why is it not refreshed or updated? Delete, delete, delete. Because the best way to think of a cache is like a ghost imprint. Somewhere there is a version of your website or your page or the history floating around in the universe and we have to literally cut it all out, okay, and clean it up to show what is currently on your website. So what you do is when you come in here, here's the settings. So normally, you know, I will have enabled, I'm going to say preload and when you preload, it says, what do you want to preload? Home page because I've only got basics testing website here, but you might want to go for pages, posts, you know, things like that. You know, you, you decide what you want to purge basically in terms of cache. And then I will ensure that, you know, you clear the cache, decrease the size of the page, decrease the size of CSS files, basically all of these ticks here. So look, I'm going to leave that there. You need to look at that screen, take a screenshot, have it side by side when you've got it on your own website, and just follow those ticks down there. I hope that's okay. Cool. Right. We're then going to go to, um, when you've done that, by the way, hit submit and we are submitted. There are lots of other options over here, which we're not going to use because you've got to pay for those. Okay. So I'm trying to keep it cost effective for you at the moment. Let's now go back over to plugins and we're now going to go to the auto optimize one. Now this is one which there's a little bit more ticking you've got to do, but follow the screen, follow what I've got and you'll be okay. So on the very first tab, we are going to tick Alt Optimize or Optimize JavaScript Code, Aggregate, also Aggregate Inline. Okay, so those three boxes we've ticked. Down here, though, you will have um, you'll have a WP includes. Um, yeah, so we've got these boxes here. This will already be pre-filled for you. You don't need to touch that. Leave that as it is. Let me just scroll there so you can see the ticks again. So look at what I've ticked and leave that as it is, okay? We then go down to CSS options. Again, follow the ticks. I'm not gonna bore you to death with explaining what each one does, but we're just trying to um, clean up the CSS. CSS is the coding 
behind your website. So in the old days, before you had page builders, when you're building websites, it was all HTML, CSS, Java, and all of these things, commands, rendering, things like that. This is gonna help clean that up. Now over here, there will be an option in here that will be called WP content, and I think it's upload, something like that. If that is present, get rid of it, okay? Because what you're because by having it in there, you're telling or top optimize, do not optimize that folder. Now the uploads folder, that's the one that's going to contain your plugins, your images, your videos, all, all loads and loads of stuff. And I do want that to be optimized. So if that is present there, WP content uh, uploads, not WP content, yeah, WP content forward slash uploads, delete it out. All right, just get rid of that. Optimize the HTML code and just make sure these are all ticked at the bottom. Save changes and empty cache. Okay, at every point, make sure you save. We go over to images. Now, this is a pretty clever one. This is where when you first go in, that will be unticked. Your ticket, because I do want to do some image lazy loading, okay? So what that means is when your images load up, if you've got a page with about 100 images, if your website has to wait for all of those 100 to load, we could be here for a minute or two, probably not a minute, but some seconds. Whereas, if we now lazy load it, they come through almost one at a time, so that's pretty, pretty good, but, when you're doing the performance of your website, if you've got some images that lazy load, that means it's taking longer for some core images to load up. So if someone is rating your website on how quick it loads up, you need certain items that are at the top of the website or above the fold. So what I mean by that is if you're viewing your website on a desktop or on a mobile phone, whatever is on the first screen before you scroll, that is above the fold. So if you've got two or three images on your website, maybe you don't want those to lazy load. Maybe you want them to load quick because otherwise it affects your performance score. Now, when you first click that box, it's gonna say zero. I changed that to four. So what I'm saying is on my web page, I want the first four images or two or three, you get to decide the first four to load pretty quickly. OK, I don't want to be like I don't want them to lazy load because it will affect your performance. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that and they go, yeah, well, lazy load. But believe me, having that ability to kind of decide at what point the lazy load kicks in. So after four, they will lazy load before that straight on the screen. Yep. Make sure you save changes. Now, for critical CSS, you can't do anything here unless you um, uh, unless you get a license, but we're not doing that. And then we have the option here called extra. Now this is a funny one. A lot of videos out there recommend you to tick the fourth option here. Combine and link deferred in head, but are not render blocking, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I have found, okay, and this is entirely up to you if you wanna do this or not. I remove Google fonts. By me removing Google fonts, okay, my website loads and performs so much better on a mobile phone and the desktop. Getting 100% on the desktop is quite easy, okay? Or 98, 99. On a mobile, your website might score 50, 60. And you sit there going, what is going on? When I remove Google fonts, I jump from 60, 65 to 98. And it's like, what? I'm telling you. It works, okay? And we are going to be using that during our, we're still going to build our website and just see how does it affect the look of it. But if you do this now, before you've built your website, it's great. If you do this afterwards, you might need to go in and modify your fonts. Okay. Right, okay, yeah, and then save the changes for that. Okay, cool, right. And then once you've done that, that's our optimizations done. Let's just go back into our plugins. Now we're going to go to PNG to JPEG, okay? The only thing I do here is say, do not leave the original PNG images on the server. I untick that because I don't want to see the original PNG. I'll have them on my hard drive somewhere. I untick it. I also do say though, auto detect transparency. So if a PNG image is transparent, I don't want to optimize that. 
Because if you optimize that and convert it into a JPEG, it loses the transparency. So whatever was transparent now becomes white, which defeats the object of why was it transparent. So bear that in mind. Okay, let's go back to our install plugins. Now we're going to go to images to WebP. I'm going to go to settings. And this is where you get to decide on what are you going to be converting. So I just leave it at 85%. I also tell it no. Normally this might be yes. So I'm going to say do not convert images to WebP during upload. Okay. I will do that afterwards. And the reason I do that afterwards is because I want the image to come in. I want it to convert to a JPEG first. And then I want it to convert to a WebP. There's going to be people out there going, you don't need to do that. Just have images to WebP. And there's other plugins as well. I have tested this out and I find just doing that double step process, it works for me. Okay. And look, I am not a genius and know everything. Okay. But I'm just letting you decide. Here's how I do it. Now let's go back to our plugins. Now we go to Elementor. Elementor Pro is already on my screen, but I'm going to show you how you add it in. Okay. So we go to Elementor Pro. This is where you can decide whether you want to disable the default colors of your theme. Okay, now I'm going to be using the Hello theme, so I don't mind leaving that ticked. If you're using Astro, Ocean WP, or any other theme out there, which already has pre-built components like header, footer, um, and layout of the page, I would disable these because there is always a danger that when one of those themes updates, it might overwrite what your elemental fonts and colors were. And that's a pain when that happens because you've got to go in and reset everything. So I'm going to leave those ticked because I'm going to use the hello theme, which you'll see in a later video. But it's up to you whether you keep that ticked or not. I would recommend if you've got Astra or anything else, you untick that. But you decide what you want to do there. OK, I'm going to go to style, leave that integration. If you want to have recapture for your elemental form, so they've got to like, you know, pick the traffic lights or pick the bridge or the cars, you got to go to Google or click the link. It takes you over to recapture, Google, register, set up your account, and then you will add in your site key here. It's up to you if you do that. In the advanced now, I don't actually touch any of this, but in experiments, there will be lots of options available here. Video playlist, which is a new one form submissions where it keeps a copy of your forms, landing page templates. It's up to you whether you use these. But the ones I will definitely always, always use is the first three, which is optimized DOM output, improved asset loading, and accessibility improvements. What is all of this? Basically, DOM is the time it takes to render the components of your website. Also, it will be elements that you're not even using on your web page, but they're sitting in the back end of Elementor. So there might be a video widget, which you're not using, but it still exists somewhere in there. By optimizing the output, improving asset loading, it makes a big difference onto how quick your page loads up. Believe me, it, I, please, please, please make sure you put those three settings in because you might regret it when you're doing a performance score check. Right. now. We're going to add in our last plugin, which is Elemental Pro, which I already have it. How do you get Elemental Pro? Well, we'll cover that in the next video.